All right, section 3.6, we're going to look at lines in the coordinate plane, and this will be a little review from Algebra 1. So if you recall, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And we're going to graph numbers 1 and 2 on the same graph, and they are both in slope-intercept form. So number 1, my slope is 2, and I'm going to make that a fraction, 2 over 1. My y-intercept is negative 3. So that means I'm going to plot my first point on the y-axis at negative 3. To get my next point, I go up 2 and to the right 1. And if I want, I could do my slope again. And then I'm going to connect my points. For my second line, y equals negative 1 half x plus 4, my slope is negative 1 half, and my y-intercept is 4. So I will start at 4 on the y-axis. To get my next point, I can go down 1 and to the right 2, because my slope's negative. I also could have, from 4, gone up 1 and left 2. And then I will connect my points. Another form of linear equations is standard form, and that's the form ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a and b cannot both equal zero. When we are given equations in standard form, the easiest method to find our points for graphing is to find our x and y intercepts. So in number three, if I want to find my x-intercept, so that would be the point at where my line crosses the x-axis, I'm going to plug a 0 in for y and solve for x. If you notice along the x-axis, you're not going up or down, y is 0, hence why we plug a 0 in. And then when you divide by negative 5, you get x equals negative 1. So that's one of my points, and on my graph, I can plot negative 1 on the x-axis. To find my y-intercept, I will plug 0 in for x and solve for y. So we get 0 plus y equals 5, or y is 5. So then I can plot 5 on my y-axis and connect those two points. Whoops. Try that again. So notice your x and y intercepts are two separate points. Then in number 4, again, same idea, let's find our x and y intercepts. So for x-intercept, plug 0 in for y, negative 8. Um, I'm left with x equals negative 8. Then your y-intercept, plug 0 in for x, we have negative 2y equals negative 8, or y equals 4. So I will plot negative 8 on my x-axis, so I'm just off the graph a little, and 4 on my y-axis, and then I can connect my two points. Point-slope form is a formula that can be used to write a linear equation when you are given a point and the slope. The formula is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So remember, m is your slope, y1 is the y value in the ordered pair, and x1 is the x value in the ordered pair. So in number 5, we want to write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form, through the point negative 6, 4 with a slope of negative 1 half. So over on the side, I'm just going to identify what I have. I have a slope, I have an x1 value, and I have a y1 value. And then using the formula, I'm going to plug in what I know. So I'll have y minus my y value equals my slope times x minus my x value but that's going to turn into a plus 6 since our 6 is negative. Then solve for y. First distributing on the right, and then adding 4, 
So I get y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. And that is my linear equation in, in slope intercept form that has a slope of negative 1 half and goes through the point negative 6, 4. All right, similar idea in 6. We are to write the equation line in slope intercept form through the points 1, 4 and 2, comma negative 2. Now the difference here is I'm given two ordered pairs and not a slope. However, if you recall, slope is change in y over change in x. So we can find our slope. So first let's find our slope. So I'm going to take negative 2 minus 4 over 2 minus 1. We get negative 6 over 1 or just negative 6. So my slope is negative 6. Now, when you're given two ordered pairs, it does not matter which ordered pair you choose for the point slope form. I'm going to choose the first ordered pair, 1 and 4, just because they're both positive. But if you use 2 and negative 2, you will get the same answer when you simplify. So again, using point slope form, I'll take y minus my y value equals my slope times x minus my x value. And then I will simplify. And then solve for y. I get y equals negative 6x plus 10. All right, the last things we're going to look at in this lesson are horizontal and vertical lines. So in number 7, we have x equals negative 3. Now, this is in slope-intercept form. Um, my slope is undefined, and I do not have a y-intercept. So x equals negative 3. If I go where x is negative 3, and this is going to be a vertical line. So I'll just draw a vertical line at x negative 3. And if I'd used a ruler, my line would be a lot straighter. Um, so let's just try that again. That's a little better. Okay. For number 8, y equals negative 2, my slope would be 0, my y-intercept is negative 2, and this will give me a horizontal line where y is negative 2. In number 9, same idea, I have a slope of 0, y-intercept of 4, so a horizontal line where y is 4. And lastly, x equals 1, so my slope is undefined. I do not have a y-intercept. I will have a vertical line where x is 1. And that's how we graph vertical and horizontal lines. All right, our last two examples have to do with writing equations for horizontal and vertical lines. In number 11, we want to write the equation of the horizontal line through negative 8, comma 6. Now remember, horizontal lines are when y equals a number, and here my y value is 6, so my equation will just be y equals 6, and I'm done. And then in 12, if I want to write the equation of a vertical line through 2, negative 1, so vertical lines have to deal with our x value, so it's going to be x equals 2, and that's all.